Hi, this is Robert Wolf. We're here live at uh, Lenaro Connect in Budapest right now. I'm here with Ogra from Canonical, and we're going to talk to you a little bit about the Ubuntu Core and how it's been working out on 96 boards platforms. So, Ogra. Yes. Yes, I know you've been working a lot with Ubuntu Core, and uh, in particular the Dragon Board 410C. In fact, we spoke recently on Open Hours, I think a week ago or two weeks ago. I wanted to ask you here with Charbax, um, you know, how has your work progressed and what kind of stuff are you actually doing with uh, Ubuntu Core on the Dragon Board? Well, currently I'm, I'm, I'm uh, focusing on getting all the interfaces on Ubuntu Snappy app, or on Ubuntu Core app. Um, if you know how Snappy, you don't know how Snappy works, I guess. At least you out there. <laughs> um, so Snappy, Snappy is a system that um, if, you, if you build an image, it consists of three parts. One is the uh, root file system, which is the core snap, which gives Ubuntu Core the name. Then you have a kernel, which comes from the vendor and needs certain bits uh, inside the kernel for security, like uh, SecComp and AppArmor, to make sure the snaps run in their secure, confined space. And then you have a gadget snap, which is the bootloader and the definition of the board. And in that gadget snap, um, you actually tell the snap packages what hardware is available in the board, and you make that hardware available. Snaps use uh, a thing called interfaces. So if you want to access a dev or GPIO one on your on your board, then from from a snap package, then the board needs to provide this interface. Unless if this is not available, your snap can't can't do anything on that board with that interface or uh, with that device. So. Currently, I'm working on, on bringing all these interfaces to the Dragon Board to actually make sure if you build an IoT snap, it can control your, your solar system temperature sensors through the hardware on the board without being blocked by the security mechanisms that Snappy, Snappy gives you. Um, beyond that, I'm working on, on getting, getting our graphical bit uh, called Mirror up on, on the Dragon Board. So you currently can already run kiosk apps where a single app runs full screen on, on, on the board for presentation, for digital signage. For um, I have a Kodi Snap, a very experimental one, uh, where you can actually um, stream your TV stuff on, on, on the Dragon Board already. Um, that will be available within the next weeks or months. Great, yeah, no, so I know uh, just recently, like I said, you were on open hours and everything. Uh, if you wanted to search for that, you can go to 96boards.org and look for the open hours, 96boards.org slash open hours. But uh, is there a website that you might be able to tell the folks out there about to go read more about Ubuntu Core on your end at Canonical? Oh yes, definitely. There is snapcraft.io where you can learn how to build a snap. Um, snaps work in a way that they are. If you if you if you work on the on the on the application side, they are actually not very platform dependent. So you can actually uh, use snaps on every Ubuntu install out there today, um, if you use an LTS system. Um, and you can develop your snap on your PC and then just. Port it over later to your to your to your hardware. Um, in in one of the 96 ports, um, open hours, I explain how to how to actually get an get a built environment on your Dragon Board app to to actually have a classic Ubuntu system. Um, this is a Dragon Board if you haven't seen it. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah, the the best way to find that episode that he's talking about is you go to uh, YouTube. You can search for 96 boards. Uh, there's a playlist called Open Hours, and it's episode 42. Uh, that's Ogra on that episode. Uh, you know, basically breaking down uh, Snappy. Yeah. May I ask? Uh, so the Snap and the uh, Ubuntu Core. When did that start? The idea and. Uh... Um, we started in uh, end of 2014. Actually, in the middle or at the end of 2015, you could start buying Dell um, IoT gateways with Snappy pre-installed, with a with an early 1504 version. Um, these devices are now all upgraded to the 16 version, which is the one that will stay around at least until um, 2018, where we will move on with the 18 version. Um, 
it, evol it, it evolved from, from the initial Ubuntu phone initiative, where we, we found a lot of drawbacks using Debian packages and using, using the old setup that we had. Or if you want to use a phone, you want, you want certain security mechanisms kicked in. You don't want your application to actually access all the hardware at the same time and, and track the user as, as the developer wants to. So, um, we developed the click package format back then, and we found, we found, yeah, that brings us all the security we want, but it's it's really awkward to maintain, and we need to we need to improve certain bits of it, and we looked into into actually finding the next generation packaging mechanism over DEPs and RPMs and whatever is out there, tables. Um, so so there, Snap evolved. Out of out of nowhere, and um, a snap is actually just a squashfs file system. It's a compressed file system, so your your application goes very very small, and it doesn't get unpacked. It gets just mounted on your device. So um, you will never take more space than the actual snap um, snap file system takes uh, in the compressed format. It hooks into kernel mecha mechanisms, as I said before. Um, App Armor and um, Secomp, so your kernel watches that um, the applications and binaries in there can't access more than, than the system allows them. So you can't just access the network without having having the network interface enabled on the SNAP. But that gives you gives you a certain amount of security where we offer interfaces that are auto-connecting, so like a server should always be network aware and should be able to, to provide something on the network, while um, if you want to access GPS, you probably don't want that to auto-connect on, on something like a phone, so users can't be tracked all the time. Um, and you want to pop up something for the user that tells him this application actually wants to track you, and so the user can then accept or deny that. So these mechanisms in the kernel are used in snaps as well. You can use them on IoT as well, and uh, you can use them on servers as well. So yeah, that's that's mainly the the, the core of a snap system. To, to, to actually actually make make sure that that uh, you pri provide the, the biggest security mechanism ever and your webcam can't be can't be hooked up to some botnet or anything from the outside. Well, I know that we're going to be talking with you later uh, in the week on Thursday in open hours. Uh, we'll have you on the panel, either you or Jamie, someone from Canonical will be there. So uh, get some questions answered Thursday. Uh, I think it's 3 p.m. Budapest time. You even stream live, right? We'll be streaming it live, yeah. So and recorded tune in. lots of. How many episodes do you have thus far? This is going to be the 43rd episode airing. We have 42 now. That was the last episode we had with Ogre, episode 42. Um, 43 will be live here in Budapest. Uh, so, how is Snap and Ubuntu Core uh, related to, a, let's say, a full Ubuntu that you run on a laptop, for example? Oh, it's. it's well. As I said, every every Ubuntu install, if you use the LTS versions or from 14.04 on, has Snap support. So you can actually install Snap packages. There is a Chrome Snap, for example, or certain certain uh, certain desktop apps that are there available as Snaps, as well as a lot of IoT stuff. If you look around, in, in, if you have a, an Ubuntu in core, uh, in, an Ubuntu desktop installed, you can just um, Run snap find in a terminal, or you can well, you cannot search in the graphical graphical uh, software center because snaps just hook in there transparently, so you won't see that it's a snap. But there's a lot of there's a lot of applications in the software center as well that are snaps that will just transparently install or uh, behind the scenes as a snap if you click them in the software center. My experience with with Ubuntu Core Snappy so far has been very fun. Uh, it's very intuitive. It kind of feels like you're working in a terminal-based uh, uh, tablet, almost. I mean, yeah. it, it's basically you're just running your commands. You're downloading what you would call snaps, but they're like applications, and it just works. It's it's really nice. Yeah. And the Ubuntu Core is just a light, very small version of Ubuntu. Right. The Ubuntu Core images um, that are that are available for for. 
ARM HF, ARM64 and um, AMD64, as well as i386, but I don't know if there's still much hardware out there plain to be plain i386. Um, they, are, they are a very, very shrunk down system. The root file system is actually only 60 megabytes big, and um, if you run it, it eats around 100 megabytes of RAM, a little less. Um, on the dragon board if you if you if you run it if you run it as a 32 bit version uh, on the dragon board we actually run the 64 bit bit version even though you could run the 32 bit version on that hardware again <laughs> if you run it in 32 bit you 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 get you get some advantages uh, like like um, smaller smaller memory footprint simply because you you use a lot smaller registers than the 64 bit version does so so um, I think on the 32-bit version we are like uh, in the 40 to 60 meg RAM usage. If you if you just have it idling on your board, and yeah, well, it's um, it depends how big your kernel is, but usually you can get it in under under 100 150 megs um, of disk space. How much more optimization can you do, and uh, what kind of optimization, what kind of work are you doing with the narrow around here? Uh, what am I doing with Linaro? I mean, when it comes um, to all this uh, Ubuntu Core and, and Snap and all that well, stuff. Canonical works with Linaro since a very, very long time. Like our, our whole ARM, ARM compiler stack is coming from Linaro in a joint effort between, between Matthias Klose, who's, who's, who's actually the GCC maintainer in Debian and Ubuntu and the Linaro guys, where, where the whole tool chain is, is optimized for ARM over years and years. So um, there, there Linaro comes in and uh, well, we've, we've been working very closely together since day one. I mean, I know Linaro... Five years ago there was an event here and it was, there was a joint There was a joint UDS and Linaro Connect event. And I've, I've been working with Linaro before Linaro was, was having a name, actually. There, is, uh, there, was, there was a UDS event in uh, Brussels where Linaro was founded, uh, yeah. where, 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 where people ran around in very secret meetings all the time and, uh, oh, you can't talk about that and they don't have a name yet. Uh, do, you and have a, that, do you have an idea for a name? Yeah, that, 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 that evolved into Linaro back, uh, then later and there we... we I remember we started with um, doing the first ARM server sessions at that UDS and everybody said, you guys are crazy, ARM on servers, you can't do that. And I think, I think uh, System76 actually uh, announced its first uh, big ARM64 server last week or two weeks ago. And in, t in terms of uh, Ubuntu Core and Snap, uh, I was at Mobile World Congress, there was a whole bunch of demos there, like is it really taking off? Like lots of in the industry, people are using this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because because people people get the security bits there. They understand after even after 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 having having millions of webcams suddenly sitting in a botnet. <laughs> people people actually get how important security is for IoT and for 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 all the mob, upcoming mobile mobile uh, gateway bits and well it. Ubuntu Core is surely too big to run on a sensor. You, you really don't want to. You really don't want to run a fully fledged Linux on a on a on a, so on, a on a sensor. Yeah, on a, on a sensor node. You, but you you want to run your gateways somehow, and these gateways connect to a cloud, or these gateways collect uh, the information from these sensors, and and. There you, you you need secure pot protocols. You need securely running apps. You need to collect the data and pre-process it for the cloud, per perhaps, and all that stuff. Uh, that's where, where where Ubuntu Core comes in. And yes, many many companies uh, are very interested in, in in using Ubuntu Core in that area. So you're definitely taking care of security. Yes, yes, that's one of the main focuses of of uh, Ubuntu Core, or even of Snap packages. If you look at the DAP then security is a matter of trust. A DAP always has full root access to your system. That means you, you are trusting the archive and you are trusting the developer uploading to the archive with, with full root access to your system. I, if, I'm, if I'm uploading a, a package to the, to the Ubuntu or Debian archive, I can put a script in that, uh, that just collects all your passwords or, or whatever because I, the Debian package 
management system has full root access on the on, on the OS. In Snappy, you can put these scripts in there, but they are executed in an environment where where they can't really access anything unless you allow them to. So, so um, while the snaps are installed as root, they, they don't have any hooks or anything that can run at install time. They only have the ability to, to execute stuff as root once they run. And if you then run as root, you are running in the confinement. It's not a container. People, people keep saying it's a container uh, OS. It's not. It is running in context of your full root file system without, without routing, without, without running anything out of context. It sees the whole system, but access to bits of the system is completely restricted. I mean, even when, when you first set up your Ubuntu core, at least on the Dragonboard 410C, I haven't done it on anything else, just getting it linked with your single sign-on on Ubuntu, I mean, you go through a lot of measures. Maybe you could talk to a little bit about that you know, setting up the security measures that you have in place for putting it on your board. Right, so initially you don't really have... We used to start out in Ubuntu with little images back then where we had an Ubuntu user with an Ubuntu password. And this user had full pseudo access. That's definitely not what you want out there in the wild. So, so nowadays you, you, have a, you, you have a security, security measure that it uses Ubuntu single sign-on to actually hook you up to, to the LaunchpadNet single sign-on service to then give you, give you access through your SSH key that you put on that, on that um, single sign-on service on the server. So you first have to create a single sign-on account there, put your SSH key in place, and then um, when, you, when you initially set it up, you have to give it the credentials for the, for the single sign-on. And you have to set up the network. That's the two steps you have to do when you when you uh, initially install on the Dragon Board um, and boot up for the first time. It asks you for wireless setup and it asks you for for user setup um, to actually to actually gain access to the board. And this user will then be able to access the board through SSH and only this user and only with that key. So you you don't have a you don't even have password login enabled at all on the board, not even on console. Um, if you need that, you can indeed set a password for the user after first time uh, signing in through SSH. But you have to go in through SSH for, for the very first step to actually do that. And uh, so, so uh, how, how does it compare, let's say, uh, with Android or something else? Uh, is this like uh, more friendly for mass production IoT devices? It compares to Android in a way that every board uses the same root file system. Like my Raspberry Pi images use the same root file system as his 96 board Dragon Board images. So when I upgrade the root file system on the server, it rolls out to everybody at the same time. There is no... There is no um, this this application only runs on my Galaxy S6 and uh, on the HTC whatever. But this application that I write and uh, and maintain will run on all these boards out there all the time. And this application will be immediately rolled out when I have a security fix uploaded to the to the application server to the to the package server, however you want to call it. We call it store. Um, so if something goes into the, into the Snappy store, it rolls out immediately to all the devices, which means security fixes come out at the minute. And it's very small updates, it's quick updates. It, it's very small updates. It, um, we recently started using xDelta3 for the, for the SquashFS updates, so you only get the changed bytes in the SquashFS delivered through the network. So it's the most efficient way to do IoT in the future? Yes, yes. I know you just mentioned the store, right? So this was something I found very interesting. You can build snaps and you can either offer them for free on the store or you can sell them, right? So people can actually profit from building snaps. Right. And building a snap, I don't know. Have you built snaps? I have not built one yet. Yes. Oh, you have to. You have I know, to. It's, yes. 
we have a we have a brilliant team that works on, on, on a tool called Snapcraft and it's such a beautiful thing because you can just take any tree, any source tree from GitHub or anywhere. I, I personally still prefer Bazaar. <laughs> I don't know why, but it feels so much more natural than Git. But but if you if you if you just take any tree and craft a little file called snapcraft.yaml, you can immediately build a snap out of your project. It's it's super super simple. You don't really have to have to learn Debian packaging, you don't really have to learn RPM packaging. You just build this uh, snapcraft.yaml file, tell it what what dependencies it needs when building and how the applications should be called in your final snap. And then you call Snapcraft, and that's it. Out comes a snap. It's file. free service, it's free bandwidth, it's free everything. Oh, that's that's all on your desktop currently, or on your on your server, where, wherever you run Snapcraft. It just builds builds there. You can with Snapcraft, you can sign on with your single sign on and have it have it automatically upload to the store as well if you want to. Or you can locally deploy your Snap into into a VM or to your Dragon board, and then test it out there. But yeah, the, the whole the whole build process is so so easy that I haven't seen something like that in in, in my whole life. It's really these guys are more brilliant than I am or anybody around Snappy is, because they managed to actually make make the building of a package so easy that that you just have to create this single file call one command and out comes the snap. You can actually follow them on Twitter at, at snapcraft.io. So um, yeah, like he said, it's it usually it's Kyle that's on there that's usually doing right. a lot of stuff. Kyle and, and Sergio. Yeah. Are the, are the they, they do a lot of really cool stuff also um, on testing days. And this is probably a show that maybe we should talk about. Uh, Ubuntu testing days, Ubuntu on air. Um, and uh, every Friday, they usually do little segments uh, where they test out stuff like Snapcraft.io. You go on there. I know you talk yeah. every now and then, right? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I hope you, you and your team are going to have a productive week here. Today. Oh yeah, we will. We will. And, and not just this week, but what's going to happen in the future? And lots of, I guess, in the industry, lots of demand for this. Lots of uh, companies, like thousands of companies, maybe, like considering how to use this. Well, I hope also community come come to us in the in the hash snappy channel on on Freenode or um, join us join us on on um, rocket rocketubuntu.com uh, in the snappy channels and ask questions if you have any. Try try out Snapcraft. Go to Snapcraft.io and uh, build your first snap. There's a tutorial there where it's uh, explained in very easy steps how to create your first Snapcraft YAML for your source for your open source project or even your closed source project. Snappy doesn't make any any difference whether you put pre-built binaries in there or you you use uh, something that's built directly from source. And when there's a trillion ARM devices out there, uh, how many of those will run uh, Ubuntu Core? Oh, any that want. I mean, um, porting. I will. I will half give it half, <laughs> half, half, half the, the, market, the right? left or the right half. Yeah, either. Yeah. <laughs> right. No, porting, porting, porting to Snappy is so easy because because you just have to build the the two snaps, the kernel and the gadget snap. And the gadget snap is mostly a description on how the image should look like, like or what kind of partitions do you want, what kind of bootloader is there. Um, and the kernel, the kernel is your kernel with a bunch of patches, potentially a bunch of patches on top. If if your if your stuff is upstream already. Um, and you can just use Linux, Linux mainline kernel, then, then it should be fairly easy to just get going with, uh, with your existing device tree model and everything in there. So porting is a snap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll end it with that, right? So thank you very much for taking the time. And uh, this is Oliver Gravert, or well known as Ogra, and Robert Wolf. Uh, look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks for having me. Thank you.